David Marsh as Dracula by Bram Stoker adapted for radio by Eric McDonald No, Lucy, I do believe the weather has changed just for you. <laughs> I thought we would have nothing but rain before you came. And see. Oh, it's so peaceful now. Oh, it was very kind of you to ask us down, Nina. Mother does love to get away from London. Oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful. I often come here to the cliff top. Nina, before Mother and I left the city... Arthur called on me. Lucy, what did he say? He spoke very straightforwardly. He told me how dear I was to him, though he'd known me so little time, and what his life would be with me to help and cheer him. So, you are to become the wife of Dr. Arthur Seward? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but poor Arthur. You see, I didn't accept right away. I only made up my mind this minute. <laughs> He asked me if I could love him in time. When I said I was grateful and flattered by his offer, but I could not decide there and then. Oh, I had decided, of course, but I, I felt it might appear unseemly of me to accept too readily. <laughs> what did you do when Mr. Harker proposed? I said yes. I said it at once. Oh! <laughs> and I cried, and Jonathan was so embarrassed. <laughs> I wish he would write. I do hope nothing's gone wrong. Well, did he say how long he would be away? He expected to be gone for no more than two weeks, but it's three since his last letter arrived. It was postmarked Budapest. You still haven't told me the nature of his journey, Nina. Oh, haven't I? Yes. I I'm sorry. Well, Jonathan's employer, Mr. Hawkins, has a contract with a certain Count Dracula, who wants to buy an estate here in England. Mm -hmm. But owing to illness, Mr. Hawkins couldn't make the journey to Transylvania himself. So, in his place, he has sent Jonathan. And I'm so pleased for him, but I wish he'd write. Oh, I wouldn't worry too much, Mina. I'm sure Jonathan is safe and happy, and is no doubt on his way home at this very moment. On his way home? I don't even know that he arrived safely at his final destination. You have enjoyed your stay at our inn, Herr Harker, since you arrived. I most certainly have. And I look forward to seeing you on my way back. Must you go to the castle? Oh, young Herr, must you go? Do you know what day it is? Yes, it's the 4th of May. Yes, the eve of St. George's Day. Tonight, when the clock strikes midnight, all the evil things in the world have full sway. Do you know where you're going or what you're coming to? My kind, kind-hearted Frau, you must not worry about me. Here comes the coach. Oh, then, please. Where is crucifix? I do not know your religion, but around your neck, please put it for your mother's sake. Oh, very well, for my mother's sake. Thank you. God take care of you. Oh, mein Herr? Yes, Herr Harker. When you are ready, sir. You know I'm to be met by Count Dracula's own coach at the Borgo Pass. The Borgo Pass? <laughs> We have arrived. Oh, I'm sorry. I I didn't realize I was so tired. It's so dark. What time is it? Five to twelve. I didn't realize the journey was so long. Now I must go. God keep you. Ah, but, uh, I say, come back. I haven't paid you. Well, nothing to do now but wait. Wolves. 
but as long as they keep their distance. They're getting closer. Oh my God. They're all around, watching. Why are they waiting? As if they're waiting for one final command. Oh. Help! Help me! Help! Here! Oh, thank God! Get in quickly, please! The night is chill, my hair! And my master, the Count, let me take all care of you! They've gone. The wolves have gone. You need not worry about the wolves now, my hair. No more worry about the wolves. As you say, the wolves have gone. Castle Dracula, mein Herr. Thank you. I will see that your luggage is taken to your room. Please, you are expected. You must knock loudly. Thank you. Count Dracula? I am Dracula. And I bid you welcome to my house, Mr. Harker. Tommy. Thank you. Tom, I will show you to your room. You will need, after your journey, to refresh yourself. I trust you will find everything you need. When you are ready, come into the other room next to your own where you will find your stuff at the Ah, Mr. Arthur, I pray you be seated and stop are you please. No, very kind. Thank you. You will, I trust, excuse me that I do not join you, but I have died already, and I do not stop. Please, help yourself. Thank you. Come now. Tell me of the house which you have procured for me. Well, sir, the estate is called Carfax. It contains in all some 20 acres, surrounded by a solid stone wall. And there are, there are many trees on it, which some say makes it in places like a blue. That's the house. Well, the house is very large, and dates back, I should say, to medieval times. There are a few houses nearby. One, a very large house, but it is not visible from the glass. As a matter of coincidence, I have a friend who is a doctor there. Seaway. Dr. Arthur Seaway. I am glad the house is old and new. To tell me there is a chapel still on the house. You see, we Transylvanian nobles like not to think of our bones. I do not see death in my life. I am the only one. I love the strange of and to be alone with my thoughts when I may. However, we can talk more another night. But now, if you will forgive me, I must leave you. I will be gone till tomorrow evening, but you will not be bored. You have the freedom of my home. Sleep well and dream well. I bid you good night. Good night, sir. Jonathan Harker's Journal, the 9th of May. Five days have passed since my arrival at this castle, and I have to admit to a certain feeling of unease and fear. Count Dracula has been most hospitable but is always busy during the day. And in the evening, 
as on the first night he excuses himself for not eating with me because of having dined with friends. Our business proceeds slowly. There are also certain odd deficiencies in the house. Considering the extraordinary evidence of wealth around it, it's strange that there are no servants. And yet everything is kept in the best order. The Count has given me access to almost all of the rooms in the castle, including a most splendid library which keeps me occupied during the daytime. But there is no freedom to go outside. The main door is kept locked. I have been unable to post any of my letters, either to Mina or to Mr. Hawkins, my employer. The Count attends to that. It has also come to my notice that there are no mirrors in the castle. And something concerning this happened to further a fear I have of the Count himself. Has it been an illusion? It happened yesterday evening before dinner. I had placed my own portable mirror before me and was in the midst of shaving when suddenly I felt the Count's hand upon my shoulder. Good evening, oh. my friend. What is wrong? I, I didn't hear you enter, sir. Uh, my razor slipped. I cut myself, I'm afraid. Let me see. Is it bleeding? Uh, it'll be all right. No. Let me see. <coughs> yes. Oh. yes, it is bleeding. I told you. It'll be all right. Ah! <gasps> Forgive me. I'm sorry if I try. <coughs> it was only that you must take care of how you cut it. It's more dangerous than you think in this country. This mirror, I, I didn't see your reflection in it when you came in, and yet I can see every corner of the room. This wretched thing. Foul bauble of man's vanity. Away with it! <laughs> So now I must use the metal of my watch case as a looking glass. I cannot describe the look in the Count's eyes as he let go of my throat. Only afterwards did I realize at what he was gazing with such malevolence. The crucifix the good innkeeper's wife had made me hang around my neck. Oh, God. The castle is a veritable prison, and I am a prisoner. One day leading fearfully into the next. I have never seen the Count eat or drink, nor have I seen him at any time during daylight. There are no other living persons in this house. And this being so, I can only presume that it was the Count himself who drove me here from the Borgo Pass. But I am still of sane mind, and must write now of what passed this evening. The Count left me early, locking himself in his room. Determined to find some way out, I tried all of the rooms, including the ones which were generally locked. The last door I tried was only locked by some dislocation of wood and iron and gave way to pressure. I found myself in an octagonal room with one window overlooking that side of the castle in which the Count's room is placed. I opened it and looked out towards his window. How my mind cringes at the memory. But almost immediately, I observed a dark shape emerge from that window, and like a giant bat with wings outspread, crawl headfirst down the steep face of the castle walls. For a moment, before vanishing into the shadows at the bottom, the head was upturned. Dracula himself. Second, I fell into a fight. When I wakened, two columns of silver dust seemed to be spinning before my eyes, spinning and solidifying into something tangible. Quickly and in fear, I lowered my head, half closing my eyes.
Yours is the right to be given. This is on his track, but we must be quick before he returns. No! Back, I tell you. Touch him and you will have me to deal with. Are we to have nothing tonight? I promise you, when I am done with him, he will be yours. Two columns of dust swirled and vanished before my eyes. And as the shadow of the Count fell across me, I passed again into a fate. I write this in bed. God has spared me this night. May he never desert me. Now is the end. It is the 29th of June. Today, I discovered a door in the hall that I had not noticed before. Beyond it, some stairs led down into the depths of the castle. Here. I found three boxes about six feet in length and three across. I opened the first. There lay the Count on some damp, newly turned earth. He lay looking as if youth had been half renewed. The cheeks were fuller and the white skin seemed ruby red underneath. The mouth was redder than ever, for on the lips were gouts of fresh blood, which trickled from the corners of the mouth and ran over the chin and neck. He lay like a filthy leech, exhausted with the fish. His hands were crossed on his chest. He was either dead or asleep. I could not say which. His eyes were open and stony, but without the glassiness of death. For in them I saw such hate as I have never seen before. But worse, far worse, was the froth of congealed blood that had clotted on his lips. As I leaned over the coffin to search his pockets for the key, the stench of decay reached and filled my nostrils. I could go no further. Now there is no choice. I must try and scale the castle walls. If there is any approach to escape and sanity, then I must take it. God help me. If only for the sake of those that love me. Oh, she's gone into the village to do some shopping. Oh, Nina, Arthur is calling to see me. I expect him at any moment. He told me that the jewel came to accept his offer of marriage mm, two days ago. I had a letter from Mr. Fulton today. Hmm. He's had confirmation that Count Dracula will shortly be arriving in this country. And news of Jonathan? The Count informed Mr. Hawkins that Jonathan left his castle immediately his duties were completed. Oh, Lucy. What's become of him? Am I never to see him again? Oh, please, Nina, don't despair yet. Then he still be well. Lucy! Oh! Arthur! My dear! And Miss Mina. Am I intruding? Not at all, Dr. Seawood. I am delighted to see you. Have you had any news of Jonathan? No, not yet. I'm sorry. My dear, is anything wrong? Oh. Mother, no, of course not. I have a letter for Wilhelmina. Ghosted from Budapest. Jonathan! At last, oh, please let me see. Thank you. It's from a sister Agatha. The hospital at St. Joseph and St. Mary. Hospital? Dear madam, I write by desire of Mr. Jonathan Harker. He is himself not strong enough to write. Though progressing well. He has had some fearful shock, our doctor tells me. Of, being dreadful, of wolves and blood, of ghosts and demons. Be assured he is well cared for, and in a few weeks he will be himself again. I am 
so glad you received my letter, Miss Westinger. You have been very prompt in coming to Budapest. We have moved Mr. Harker into this general ward rather than leave him for any length of time on his own. Do you feel it, sir? Yes, of course. Thank you, Sister Agatha. Hello, Jonathan. Never let me know. Never. Please, oh, my dear. Nina, let us get married at once. Of course, just as soon as you are fully recovered. No, I, I mean now. Here. Yeah. The superior will make all the necessary arrangements. Oh, my dear. Jonathan, it's so good to see you back home safe and sound and looking so well. Thank you. Married life, obviously, it's really good. You're disagreeing with us both, Mrs. Westinger. But where is Lucy? My dear, I didn't want to worry you came away, way, but I'm afraid Lucy's been extremely ill. No. Arthur's with her now. He hardly leaves her bedside. Dr. Seward. Miss Mina, Jonathan, how good to see you. Thank you, but how is Lucy? No better, I'm afraid. I've done everything I possibly can. But each morning I find my going more weak. What seems to be the matter? Lack of blood, as far as I can look at. I don't understand it. I can find nothing in the blood. No germs, no trace of an injury. I don't know. Don't... Have you discussed the case with anyone? I've written to a friend of mine, Professor Van Helsing of Amsterdam. He knows as much about obscure diseases as anyone in the world. I've asked him to come at once again. This morning. Yes, of course I will. Tell her I'm not trying to keep her a prisoner in her bedroom. I'll go up at once. Mm. I'm sorry I couldn't meet you. Oh, you mustn't upset yourself. I'm quite well, really. So I think it is well. And I'll be married within the month. Yes, your mother told us. Called in an old friend to confirm his own beliefs that you're well on the way to recover. Professor Van Helsing of Amsterdam. Lucy, 
Hypnotism? Hypnotism has been proven very well. Ah, then am I to believe that all you will accept is proven fact? You must trust in me now. I want you to believe in things that you cannot. You must try to keep an open mind. Professor, I've recently read a journal of my husband that may lend weight to what you tell him. I thought it might help me to understand the misery and terror he went through during his stay in Transylvania. Perhaps we may discuss this later. Hmm? First, it is more important we make the transfusion of blood from Arthur to Miss Lucy. Oh, Mrs. Arthur, I, uh, I wish you to run an errand. Yes, of course. I wish you to buy garlic to hang around Miss Lucy's room as much as you can. But all this we must keep secret from her mother. She has the weak heart, as you know. Must not be upset. I don't know. And Arthur? Now is the time for us to set to work. After that, you will need to rest, and then we can talk further. Yes, of course. But before I talk, I must return to the asylum. I have work to do there. Did you call me, sir? Order, I wondered... I wondered if you heard that cry just now. Yes, sir, I heard it. In fact, for a moment... Oh, I know it's impossible, but uh, I thought it sounded more like a wolf. A wolf? What about what you said was? The car facts so they seem to be moving on. Lucy, is in danger. They can't work. Warden, I must leave. I, I want you to take care of things till I get back. I may be some time. Oh, uh, you all right, sir? I'll take care of it. Excuse me. 
excuse me, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You seem in such a hurry. I don't wish to detain you, of course. But if you could help me, it would only take a moment or two. Uh, of course, if I can be of any assistance. I live just along the drive here, but I can't get my key to fit the lock on the gate. But that leads to the car place. Yes. Is anything wrong? Can I have the key, please? Yes, of course. Yes. I can't get it to turn out. This gate isn't locked. That's why the key won't turn. I'm sorry. I was silly not to realize. Anyway, it's... It's open. I'm sorry I can't be of more assistance. But you can. I'm rather afraid of the walk to the house. Would you be so kind as to walk? I'm a... Wait, that's impossible. I... Please, Dr. Seaman. How do you know my name? Oh, I haven't seen you before. Well, you don't believe me, Dr. Seaman. Look into my eyes, my honesty. I didn't. Look at my eyes. Your eyes. Yes, my eyes. Seen. Now you are mine, and nothing can save your precious Lucy. Lucy, God! Oh, Lucy. You fiend, you damn fiend. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Let me in! Let me in! This is where to prevent the man healthy! Arthur, I am glad you are here. My dear boy, you must be Lucy is dying. Would not be long. Both of them. Lucy. Oh, my God. Lucy. against the window and into the room. Mother screamed and pushed me. My head must have hit the bedpost for I remember the room spinning. It seemed to me like a part of the room. The door into the room. Then there was a weight on me. No, no, please, do not rise. I'm honored to meet you, sir. Arthur Seward has told me about you. I hope you will accept me as your friend and will not be annoyed by any questions I might ask. If I can be of assistance, sir. Recently, you returned from Transylvania. Oh, Professor... Oh, it's all right, Mina. You were there to do business with a certain Count Dracula. Dracula, yes. Has it ever occurred to you that this man might have arrived in this country? He, he, he can't be here. Mr. Hawkins would have told me if he had moved into Carlisle. Your employer has been very ill recently. He has been unable to tell me anything himself. Apart from the fact that he received an invoice for the delivery of three large boxes to Carlisle. This was shortly after a letter from the Count saying that you had left. 
and that he himself would be leaving shortly for England. This can't be true. Now I can understand your father. Your wife and I have both read your doom. Mina? It helped me understand, my dearest. But quickly. Dracula is here at Carfax with his two foolish brides, whom I have destroyed by driving stakes into their hearts. Oh, Professor! Forgive me, but it is the quickest way, and if you are to help and support us, you must know all. And Dracula, Professor? Yes. No. He was not in his rest in this. Now that he will have discovered my destruction, he can expect a terrible danger. Now, Jonathan, you have no doubt read in the papers reports of the beautiful white lady who has been trying to lure innocent children from their homes at night. Yes. Have you any idea who that lady might be? No. Miss Lucy. Lucy? Please, dear lady, she is no longer the Lucy you knew. She is completely evil now. You see, Jonathan, this lady did not die of anemia. She was claimed by Dracula to be one of his unholy three. And is accepting as the brave creature he is. He will help me to finish the most unpleasant task. Do I also have your support? It will be needed. That's the count that tried to intervene. You have my support. Then I shall come too. No, my dear lady. We do not wish the Count to set eyes on you. At home, you will stay. My friend Jonathan, you will meet me and Dr. Seawood at the graveyard tonight at the eleventh hour by the willow near Miss Lucy's room. She's gone. Now she is at rest. The rest of the damned. Come. The key to the tomb, Arthur. Now. Now, you will both help me to lift the lid of her coffin. Uh, <coughs> as I first knew her. The life and color you see in those cheeks is not her own. The blood that flows in those veins is the blood of those who would become like her. Unless we are quick, Arthur. Look again. The face is altered. Her teeth, it's so sharp, the mouth, cruel. Here is the stake, Arthur. Place it on her breast. Now the mallet, you must strike hard and with precision. I can It is right that it is you who do it. Give me strength. God rest her soul. Arthur, you will wait outside. No, no, do not look back. Jonathan, in my bag, a small surgical sword. Now, you will hold the head 
step to preserve is necessary. Good. That is it. The garlic next? Yes. Now to fill the mouth with So. And so. That is it. Now she is no longer the undead. Good. Now we will put the head back. So and replace the coffin lid. So be it. Now let us join your friend. Arthur, are you all right? It's all over. All over. And we weren't troubled by the Count. No. This has been worrying me. In keeping Madame Mina away from where we thought there would be danger, it is possible that perhaps we have left her in greater peril. Alone. We can I am Dracula. You and your stupid husband, along with his meddling friends, have caused me much anxiety for this exertion. I desire a little refreshment. Your friend Lucy was a most willing giver. Child. Such a beautiful throne. <laughs> And now, to bind the initiation, I rip the shirt, cut my breath, so, and you will drink the blood of Caesar. Drink, I command it. So, you know now, and they will know before long what it is to cross my path. You are no flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, kin of my kin, my bound for white breast on a wire, and shall later be my companion and helper. Peter! Peter, open the door! Oh, that one, the day will come when you will bring him to me, and I shall not be able to do that which I intended for him. But now, it is farewell until I call for you. <laughs> the room! The room is full of silver dust! He's been here! Oh, Mina, are you all right? I wish I were dead! I wish I were dead! Mina! What happened? He made me drink his blood. What does this mean, Professor? It means that unless we are able to destroy this devil, he will claim Mrs. Harkow for his own. Oh, God, no! Jonathan, you will stay with your wife while Dr. Seawood and I return to Carfax. We may at the moment be unable to destroy Dracula with a stick, but should we have the opportunity to destroy his coffin before dawn, he will have no sleeping place. Caught in the light, his body will rot and decay, crumble to dust. If we can do this, then hurry, Professor. I will stay here with you. Long have you been gone now? You must succeed, John. They must. Come in. They're good. He has gone. Oh, no. The box was gone and he had destroyed the other two. What are we to do now? There is only one thing to do. It's too late. There's nothing to be done now. Your lack of courage is not like you. Of course, there's something to be done. Then let us know. The Count will return to Castle Dracula. And we must follow him. 
You damn face too often. I never thought to see you again. Just tell us again, good lady, of the Count's plans. The arrangements are always the same. When was here last? I watched and waited for Herr Harker to return from the castle. But he did not. But then after a long time, a crowd of Scarlet Gypsy come from the direction of the past. They're bringing the three boxes from the castle to be sent to India. Stop you and tell me this while they eat and drink. But two days ago, they pass again and eat and drink. They are to collect a box and bring it back to the castle today. They will travel through the Burgo Pass and reach the castle before sunset. My friend, if you will go, you will borrow my husband's pistols. These gentlemen will take the pistols. For myself, I have this machete and when the Count has settled on my beloved Lucy's behalf. And you will leave the good lady here? No, she will come with us. These are dark powers we struggle against, dear lady. With us, she will be safe. Come, let us set out for the Borgo Pass. <laughs> What are you doing, Peter? And make a bound, madam, that is certain of holy water, to which no evil thing may pass, and which you must not leave. I think I hear them. So the sun will be down, and come to Nicker. We must concentrate on getting to the box. Please, darling, be careful. Don't worry, Mina. And be careful to stay within the circle. I shall. Oh, we will wait here until they are almost upon us. But be very quiet. Now. Halt! <laughs> There's the box. Careful, Jonathan. Behind you. <laughs> Thank you. The box. Quick, the box. The sun's setting. Be careful. Be quick. Take that, you... Uh, Arthur. Oh. Are you all right? My side. Oh. Fine! I shall be down with you, Captain! Oh. 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 Take me to the box. Bernhard, let me have the machete. No! I wish to do it. Just open the lid for me. There. Now cut off the head, Arthur. The head! The knife is too heavy for him to swing. His eyes! The Count, she is waking. Our Father who art in heaven. Now, Arthur, now. Uh, again, there must be no delay. Hallowed be thy name. Arthur, you're bleeding. Miss no. Mina, I told you to stay within the city of the circle. Look, he sees us. Thy kingdom come. Ah, no! Yes! Ah! Thy will be done. Oh, Arthur, Arthur, you're badly hurt. Dead. He is dead. Even now his body turns to die. Yes. Dracula by Bram Stoker, adapted for radio by Eric MacDonald, David March played Count Dracula, Francis Peter, Mina, Christopher Good, Arthur, Rosalind Shanks, 
Lucy, Michael Harbour, Jonathan, and Aubrey Woods, Professor Van Helsing. The female vampire was played by Kate Turneridge, and the innkeeper's wife by Pat Heath. Other parts were played by Malcolm Hayes, Andrew Sachs, Madeline Kemp, and Jim McNabb. The play was produced by Lynn Deer. Thank <laughs> you.